Hello, all you creative people, and welcome to another video. Welcome to this video on Frontline, the procedural tower defense game no one asked for. This video has a new style, as you may or may not have already noticed. And the main theme of this devlog, shall I say, is navigation and pathfinding. So let's pull up the Unity Docs page, or at least what the Unity Docs say about navigation and pathfinding. Specifically, I'm going to be working a lot with nav meshes this episode. But yeah, navigation, the navigation system just allows you to create characters that can move around a nav mesh or a navigation mesh in full. They can also have dynamic obstacles and etc. So, to have this work on a procedural tower defense game, I decided I needed to, you know, create a navigation baker that can just bake nav meshes at runtime. So I started off as all good Unity projects start off with, as I put in some of the libraries that I was going to use, specifically Unity Engine.ai and Unity.ai.navigation. Those will come in handy later. I then added all the useless stuff like Unity Engine and Systems.collections and Systems.collections are generic. And made my class, put a couple um, variables, should I say. I then added an awake function and then a start function that has a void that is now there which is called the nav machine function or whatever i just it just gets all the parts all the parts in my game and activates the nav mesh the nav mesh surfaces and builds a nav mesh with them that's pretty simple for a script, if I say so myself, and I'm not completely responsible for that one. It is slightly based off of the build nav meshes at runtime, which can be found in Unity documentation. I'll also leave a link in the comment description below. I then moved on to allowing my enemies to actually use the navigation or the nav meshes. So I put some basic variables, you know, you know. I created it said I created a function called spawn agent that will just quickly create an agent or a nav mesh agent, put in all of its variables that I have at the top. And then after that I just have a start function that puts all the positions, um that gets all the part positions, puts them in a list. I then, if we use the nav mesh, I spawn the agent, I then have a strength multiplier. That's every round would basically multiply the strength of the agent by a certain amount. That probably was covered in a previous episode. I then have a late update script that would just send down the raycast, seeing which path we are and finding the path ahead of it because it is very important that we know the path ahead of us for the next script. But anyways, for the next script, we went on to creating something as we requested in my game so much. And that is spikes. People want spikes. So I set up a couple variables seeing what the spikes would do, which was basically slow down the enemy and do a certain amount of damage. I also had it so that you can choose whether to keep your spikes each round or for whether they would disappear each round. I then started off with a basic update loop that basically would get the every single enemy's next move location, which is why it's very important in my enemy TD script that I figured out what the next move um, position was going to be, specifically for the spikes. And that's all. I then moved on to the spike tower, which is pretty similar to the regular um, towers we have in the game. I started off with a couple variables like range, etc. I then added a start function that would just uh, put a parent, um, put a game object inside of uh, inside of the spike tower game object. That would basically just be called the spike parent game object. This is where all the spikes would be found and makes it easier for specifically deleting the spikes each round. That's why I had to have that there. But I also have it for my other towers, just in case, you know, you can never be too sure. 
I then got all the spawn points, which is just simple as getting all the parts, seeing whether they're inside of our range, and adding them to a specific list. I then have a clear spikes variable that basically just clear all the spikes that is inside of the game engine. Uh, it's not game engine. That's inside of the spike tower. That is a pretty simple script. I then also have a spawn spike function that quickly just spawn the spikes inside of a random point inside the spawn points list that was created before. Oh my goodness. I quickly, well, we're moving to the end of this enormously long video by going to the setting saver. Again, start off with a basic class and a couple libraries and all that. And then moved on to creating an instance because for this um, script especially, I need to be able to access it from all, from a range of different scripts just to get stuff done. So I needed to have an instance. I then created an awake function that would just quickly make sure that there are no other setting savers because this specific script, the only script in my, ga in my game, that has do not destroy and load. So to make sure it doesn't break or anything, when you went back to the main screen and went to another game, I had to check whether the whether there were other setting savers or not and destroy them if they were. I then set the instance after figuring out whether this is the only setting saver. And then have a basic update settings function that can be accessed from a, from every single script. That would basically just set whether it's hard mode or not, or anything like that. Talking about hard mode, hard mode's in the game. More on that in the gameplay section. I then added a um, special feature, a feature people have been looking for for a long time. And that's the ability to turn the grid on or off. It just, it makes the game look a little bit better. And it, in my opinion, it looks great. And it is the default for the grid to be off, but if you know, you're a diehard fan for the old days, you can turn the grid on specifically for you. And that's fine. Now talking more on the hard mode, all the hard mode basically does is it would, if, is that it would make it such you have 1 HP, your buy multiplier, um, so how much stuff increases in price every round is way higher your max health also way higher and yeah that's basically it also if you're in hard mode the nav mesh system comes into play so yes if you're in hard mode just remember this is now nav mesh this stuff is smart smarter than most people watching this video not gonna lie anyways that's been this video and i hope i can see you guys in the next one goodbye i'll see you guys next one goodbye and before I finish this episode, um, the new update is currently on itch.io, if anyone wants to check that out. And goodbye.